Welcome to the Lemonade Stand, where I'll be squeezing refreshing content from some pretty sour topics. It's been my pleasure to make this batch for you, so I hope you enjoy and are having a good one. Sebastian Rodriguez was caught during the To Catch a Predator sting of Riverside, California. He was 20 years at the time and believed that he was speaking to a 12-year-old female. Over the course of this video, I will dissect the chat log between he and the perverted justice decoy, and then take a look at his confrontation with Chris Hansen at the sting house. The information that is available to us is only a small window into this person's life, and I'll be using this to speculate on what may have been going on with Sebastian at the time of the incident. Please keep in mind that these are my personal opinions, and the goal of this video is to give us all a closer look into this individual, than for you to take the information presented and formulate your own opinion on what sort of person that he may be. This chat log is a short one, only spanning around two and a half hours, starting at 5.42pm and then ending at 8.17pm the very same day. Let's dive right in, shall we? Immediately age is established, and in one of the more blatant examples of predatory behavior that I've read, Sebastian states, Oh my god, you're so hot. Referring to her profile picture. The decoy asks him for his details, and he lies, saying that he is 16. I'm going to take a look at this first lie a little closer. It is fairly obvious what Sebastian is doing here, trying to look younger to connect with the child, as he is likely aware 20 would sound rather old to a 12-year-old girl. He has reduced his age to coincide with the idea of who he thinks a child would be comfortable talking with. This is an ominous thing for a 20-year-old to do, as a young-looking 20-year-old such as Sebastian could easily pass for 16, and if this scenario were real, could have some serious potential to manipulate a child into his desires. A young child is more than likely to refuse a 46-year-old man pretending to be 35, such as Palumbo, but a 20-year-old pretending to be 16, such as Sebastian, is far more likely to succeed, making him a very dangerous predator. The decoy says to Rodriguez, Dude, I'm looking for older, Zoe. You can't even buy beer, neither. It's an interesting little moment, that's for sure. The decoy has now caught someone who they think is too young for the investigation, as they would believe that Sebastian is telling the truth and that he's only 16. The decoy then mentions that she wants an older guy, and this prompts Sebastian to tell the truth about his age. The next run of dialogue happens over a 10 minute period, and is pretty much all Sebastian talking to himself. Hey, well, I'm really 20. Is that okay, babe? I want someone who is 12 so bad, oh my god. Is 20 okay? So can I call you? You there? Please, talk to me. I have a cam and will do you so good. Babe, you there? The decoy finally responds and then says, Sorry, it's okay. So I'm 20. Is that okay? That's cool. Sebastian's fluctuation around his age is rather troubling. His ability to lie about something like this, then shamelessly shift when it suits him, is something that only seasoned liars partake in and something that I do imagine spills over into his everyday life. He has spotted something that he wants, and he adjusts his age to get it. I would argue that this is one of the most common forms of lying, or at least one that we would see quite frequently. If someone is late to a function, for example, and is aware that they are still an hour away, they may say that they're only half an hour away, as it deflects heat from that immediate moment, and allows them to repel the unwanted confrontation for a bit longer. Or someone who hates spicy food may be on a first date with a person that they are quite attracted to, and when asked if they do like spicy food, they say, oh yeah, I love it for sure, in an attempt to look relatable as their date has just ordered the spiciest dish on the menu. I would say at some point, most of us have spun a lie like this to some degree, and we have definitely had these lies used upon us, whether we know it or not. What we're seeing here with Sebastian is an example of this style of lying. He has told the decoy that he is 16, the decoy is expressed that she doesn't want to talk to him, as the perverted justice team have no interest in busting a 16 year old. Then he immediately changes his age to 20. The decoy falls silent for over 10 minutes. We don't know the reason why, but I can only assume that it was because they were speaking to their colleagues, trying to figure out if this guy is actually 16 or 20, and whether they should proceed with him. Perverted Justice opt to proceed, and Sebastian now has a target over his head. In his little monologue where the decoy fell silent, he calls her babe, and then follows that up with, I want someone who is 12 so bad. That is one of the worst things that I think I've ever read. Sebastian is ranking in the worst of the worst here. As I read through this log, something that is a reoccurring thought which comes up for me is my inability to decide whether Sebastian is actually attracted to minors, or if he is just a horny young brat who is only thinking with one part of his body. Whether he is lying about wanting a 12 year old or not is irrelevant though, as saying this is just a trick to get her to feel special and comfortable with him. 
A 12 year old likely hasn't had much exposure to male sexuality and he is trying to fit into a category here where he may be one of the first people or the first person to show her that she is physically attractive. Telling her this will work to get her to engage with him on a level that she may not have engaged with before. I would argue that Sebastian has done this before. Again, if this scenario were real and Sebastian were to say to a real 12 year old girl that he wants someone her age, this could lead her to ask, what do you mean? Why would you want me? And then all of a sudden, dialogue has now been opened for him to begin to show her the parts of the male psyche. And she likely hasn't seen this side of people in her short time on the planet. So it may make her think, this is a rare occurrence. Maybe I should speak to this man more, because other men don't seem to see me this way. As the chat goes on, Sebastian really wants to talk to the deco on the phone. I imagine this is because he thinks that she is talking to other guys. Notice earlier in the chat how the deco said that she is looking for someone older, someone who can buy her booze at the very least. This will become an important line that I think affects a lot of this chat log. Sebastian becomes focused on the idea that this young girl is going to be meeting up with someone tonight, so it might as well be him. He probably feels as though he is working against the clock here. It's only a matter of time before she finds someone more suitable than he, and he has already messed up by telling her that he was 16. Even now, after revealing the truth and mentioning that he is 20, he is still aware that this might be too young for her. And believe me, the irony of that statement is not lost on me, that's for sure. The panic has thoroughly set in and he wants to lock her down on a phone call because A, that will verify that she is real and B, it'll essentially prevent her from talking to other men as all of her attention will be focused on the call. He is in the process now of trying to eliminate the competition and we see him ask her to call him 13 times within the span of 30 minutes. In between his incessant requests for her to call him, the decoy asks, What do you want to do if you come over? His reply is, we can do whatever. I'm hot too, I promise. She then asks for his name, to which he lies again and calls himself Chris. It also appears that they do have the phone call that he wanted, as there is a break in the dialogue for around six minutes. And after this break, he no longer asks for her to call him. After this phone conversation, the decoy expresses upset that he is unable to bring the Mike's Hard Lemonade. I assume during the call, he said that he would be unable to obtain it. Again, this little bit of information will become important to keep in mind later on in the video segment. This is a very short chat log, likely one of the smallest on record at only three pages long. The segment coming up will take up most of the log and is pretty heavy on the predator chatter. Are you talking to other guys about coming over too? Lol, no, should I? Because I think I should be the one that you pick. Because I am hot, laugh out loud. No, I don't think you should. I think you should just settle with me, laugh out loud. His words resemble that of an impatient young man. It looks as though he's almost selling himself, like a marketplace for men where people of all ages can come and select a man for the evening. He has found a prospective buyer and is trying to convince her that he is far superior than the other male specimens in stock. As we saw with Cory Ahia, Sebastian here borders on having a lack of humanity. Instead of asking the young girl why she needs to drink at the age of 12, why she's looking for an older guy, and is everything okay in her life, he instead proceeds to fuel the darker side of his mind. He is completely desensitized to the horrifying nature of his desires, so much so that he thinks that he is in some sort of race, a race where there is a 12 year old child as the prize, and he must get in first before the competition beats him to it. He doesn't see this 12 year old girl as a person, he sees her as a sexual object that is to be claimed by some man. He is younger than most predators, that's for sure, but he sure as heck is just as bad. The decoy says, What are we gonna do? We can eat, watch a movie, hang out, and I would want to play with you. That's kinda boring. Laugh out loud. Well, I want to play with you. Would you let me? I would please you really good. Trust me. What you mean? Like, make out, and touch you and stuff. Are you a virgin? Yeah. Cool. But I done stuff before. Cool. What's the farthest you have gone with a guy? I touched him and stuff. Cool. There's not too much to pull apart here. Sebastian is testing the water, alluding to sexual activity by using playful wording and gauging how far he could go with her. By asking if she is a virgin, this clearly indicates the extent of what Sebastian wants here. She confirms that she is a virgin, and he wants to know how much she has done, then proceeds to question her on what she would like to do with him. Coming up, we have a very interesting moment. Sebastian says, What would you want to do tonight? 
I mean, what would you want to do tonight? It's interesting to note that Sebastian gets a little more concerned about his sentence structure here. I'm not sure if I'm missing something simple, but it does strike me as strange some of the corrections that he places upon his own words. For example, at the start here, he corrects his spelling of the word U, changing it from the letter U to all capitals Y-O-U. I'm unsure why he does this. Maybe it's to accentuate the question that he wishes to ask this child? Saying it this way, there is no mistake. He wants the child to know that she has full control over the situation. An interesting little side thought as well, throwing control to the child this way, something that we do see many predators do. A child is unable to provide consent for a multitude of reasons, one of them being that a decision they make, such as consenting to sex, may not be in their best interest, yet they don't have the age or experience to fully grasp why that may be. When we see a predator like Sebastian throw control to the child this way, it can really only spell one of two things. The predator is either completely aware of why it is illegal to sleep with a child and is ignoring everything for their own sexual fantasy, or the other option, which I think is more pertinent to Sebastian's case. He is completely oblivious to why this may be illegal and cannot see the error in his ways at this particular moment. Likely Sebastian is a rather immature 20 year old and hasn't begun to yet pay attention to his own transition from child to adult. What I mean by that is, and I'm certain we all experience this to some degree, is the Peter Pan syndrome. Here is a definition. Peter Pan syndrome describes one's inability to believe that they are of an older age or to engage in behavior usually associated with adulthood. This syndrome affects people who do not want or feel unable to grow up, people with the body of an adult but the mind of a child. I'm not saying that Sebastian here is afflicted with that condition. We don't have anywhere near enough information to suggest that. What I do offer though is a speculation on his personality based on what we have in front of us and the video segment with Chris Hansen. The transition from adult to child is not really well defined. One day we are children and then the next we are told that we are adults. I remember once at 24 years of age, I was watching the news and the reporter said a 22 year old man was arrested for robbery. I had a thought along the lines of, hang on, he's 22 and being described as a man? That means, oh, when did that happen? I'm a fully fledged adult now, hey? Every year piles onto the next, and before you know it, responsibilities, relationships, careers, conflicts, bills and payments all tighten the noose around our metaphorical necks, and we must devise a strategy for how best to navigate this stormy hurricane as pleasantly as possible. It's not an easy task. And for most people, at 20 years of age, the storm of life hasn't begun to reveal how intense it can be, and a lot of people don't have to fully face what it is to be an adult just yet. But the law still does apply to these people as though they are adults, and they must bear the full weight of consequences if they make poor decisions. This now brings me to our friend Sebastian here. Sebastian is a young man with raging hormones. He has found something he wants, is completely ignorant to the dangers of what sleeping with a child could do to her, as he himself probably views himself as a child. He would not see himself as an adult preying upon a minor, but just as some good-looking young thing who's keen to get with someone else young and good-looking. It doesn't really matter the age to him, as long as the attraction is there between them both. If that is there, then it can all be put down to two young kids having fun. He is not looking at her as a 12-year-old child, but as someone who is in the same category as he, the category of being a young adult. She is just entering into this world of being a young adult, and he is leaving, so there's no real problem here morally for him to dive into a sexual liaison with her, in his mind anyway. And that goes back to my comment about him throwing control to the child. He says, what would you want to do tonight? As long as this child says that she wants to engage in sexual activity with him, and then it is okay with him, even though the law says it's not. Morally, Sebastian has already resolved it with himself. The decoy says, I don't want to get preggers. Lol, you won't, babe. Why you say that? We can just play. Or I could use two condoms. That would be safe. For reals. Yeah, that would make it safe, I promise. You gotta bring them, cause I don't got any, laugh out loud. Yeah, I would bring some. Do you want to? Or would you want to? If you don't hurt me. I heard it hurts. I'm not going to hurt you, babe. Plus, I'm not really that big. I'm like normal size. And if it hurt, we could just play. I would please you good. Oh, okay. The decoy states her concern over getting pregnant, which is always a very subtle way for the decoys to hint at wanting sex without explicitly having to state that they want to do it. It infers to the predator that they are keen, but they have concerns. 
This then opens the door for the predator to engage in highly sexual conversation. It's a very smart little trick that I see the decoys use a lot, and it is highly effective. Sebastian goes on to explain that he will not only bring, but can use double-layered condoms for added safety. He also alleviates her concerns about intercourse being painful by exposing that he is not that big. I really don't know what else to say about that other than this man really has done a stand-up job at making himself look like an absolute heat-seeking predator, hey? Sebastian is like a bull that has just seen red. He's charging without thinking and will say and do whatever. He will lie and say that he's 16, then tell her the truth that he is 20 in the very next sentence. He'll tell her that he really wants someone who is 12 years old and that he has a small penis. Now, whether those last two statements are lies or not, these words are all an attempt to groom the child for sex. For him to openly state that he has a small penis and wants someone who's 12 years old, it really looks to me like he is a young man who has figured out a system to groom children. Who knows if he's ever been successful before this, but the lack of hesitation in saying these things strikes me as very unnerving. The chat presses on and Sebastian says, I could, like, eat you out and stuff if it hurt. Does that sound good? Um, okay. Would you want to have sex? And if it hurt, I could touch you and eat you out and stuff. Hey, I gotta pee and go shower. I'm going invisible, but I will I am in like 15, okay? Going invisible so peeps don't bug me. Babe, I really want to do this, and I don't want you to find another guy. I won't, promise, okay? Okay, sounds good. Hold on, okay, in 15 minutes. Okay, thanks, babe, because I like you, and I think we have a good connection. Okay. Thanks, me too. So don't forget about me, and I do want to go over, and I will. It will be fun, I promise. The decoy once again subtly letting him know that she is in high demand. She needs to go invisible to stop other people from bugging her, which in turn triggers Sebastian's panic mode to kick back in. He begins to call her babe, referring to the special connection that they have, and stating again how much he really wants this to happen, selling it to her that it will be fun, he promises. Something that rubbed me the wrong way here is the good connection that he refers to. It really bothers me, I suppose, because of my definition of what a good connection is. I would say, to have a good connection with someone, we would have to be talking for hours and hours, days, or weeks even. If we see eye to eye on a lot of subjects and our unspoken bond hasn't been majorly influenced by the drug that is attraction, then I would say we have a good connection. Attraction can really alter a lot of things as well, especially when you meet someone for the first time. It's a powerful little mechanism that our brains use to establish who we would like to mate with. A biological trick of sorts to ensure our offspring have the best chance possible. A byproduct of this mechanism is it has the ability to lull us into a state where we become more tolerant of the things we otherwise would not accept. It can suppress our values to various degrees as we push aside what may not seem overly important at the moment in the face of this person that we are attracted to. On a positive side though, it may open up our minds and enable us to connect with ideas, hobbies, or even other people that otherwise we might turn our backs on. It can give us energy when we have none, make us stay awake longer, wake up earlier, and all around push us in directions we have otherwise never gone in. This is often why so many people are attracted to partners that inspire them. They help us grow as people People, and as long as we're not setting aside too much of ourselves, ignoring who we are or what we value as important, then this can be a very beautiful thing. So the good connection that Sebastian refers to up there? I'm sorry, I just don't see it. I don't see what possible words could be used as evidence to suggest a good connection is present. All this looks like to me is someone desperately trying to solidify a sexual meetup by saying things that sound pretty and could lead a child to believe they've stumbled upon something much more special than the actual reality of the situation. The chat continues on with a bit more predator chatter. Sebastian offers to buy her a vibrator, really showing where his brain is at with that special connection, hey? He then asks her multiple times if she is there, expressing that he really wants to come over. When the decoy responds to his questions here, the finer details of the meetup begin to get discussed. You can't do eight? No, I can, laugh out loud. But babe, I really do want to do it. Are you really going to, or are you not sure? Okay, my address is... Okay, cool, babe. But do you really want me to come over? I am cute, I promise. Hella ya, yeah, laugh out loud. Can you bring mics too? Yeah, sure. What do you want, babe? What you mean? Mics to drink? Or what are mics? Lemonade stuff, but booze. Laugh out loud. Okay, I will for sure, babe. 
have to admit, the decoy here does have good taste. Some lemonade never goes astray, hey? I wonder if I should get into the business of alcoholic beverages once I run out of predators to analyze. If Hansen ever decides to get back into the game, Dave's Hard Lemonade will sponsor the show for sure. The chat is now wrapping up, and the decoy asks for Sebastian to sneak in around the side. Sebastian is a little concerned about who else may be there, but overall doesn't appear too phased. He confirms that he will be bringing Mike's Hard Lemonade, and Sebastian sets off to the meetup. Before we take a look at the footage from the house, we have one very important detail or should I say lack of detail, that I'd like to highlight. At not one point in the chat did Sebastian mention that he was going to bring a friend along. Something that one would think be important to mention. As you will see, Sebastian's friend most definitely tags along. Hey. You here? Hey. Uh, before I got this part of the thing, can I hold your hand? Please get out for a second. What was that? Hey, how are you? Good. Good. Why don't you come on in, please? Uh -huh. Right now, have a seat right on that. Uh... Can you go sit right next to him? Okay. Yeah. okay. Come right over here, please. Right over there. Yeah. So what are you guys up to? Sebastian has entered the house and brashly moves around the room as he immediately begins looking for the decoy. Whoever placed the location for these hidden cameras really needs to be congratulated, as this shot is spot on. We're able to see the curiosity on Sebastian's face shift to confusion as he is approached by Hansen. Hey, how are you? Good, good. Taking a quick look at Hansen here, he opts for a more serious approach. Usually he would spout a one-liner to rattle the man that he is facing, and likely to amuse himself a little, but that does not happen here. Hansen begins barking orders at the boys, telling them where to put things and where to sit. He is dealing with two men that are much younger than him, and is fully aware that he can easily slip into a role of authority. Chris doesn't waste a moment dancing around this either. He dives right in, and we can see how effective this is, as both boys follow his commands like bewildered sheep. They know they're in trouble, but what sort of trouble is the unknown. Chris could either be a cop, or a father at this point, and I doubt that they want to mess with either. Why don't you come on in, please? Uh -huh. Right now, have a seat right on that. Uh... Can you go sit right next to him? Okay, come right over here, please. Right over there. Yeah. So what are you guys up to? Nothing. Nothing. He just came to hang out. Yeah, him out. Who are you going to hang out with? Oh, this girl I met. Really? Yeah. And, and what are your guys' names? Sebastian Rodriguez. Sebastian Rodriguez. Yeah. And so you're Sebastian, uh, LAVC? Yeah. And who are you? Oh, I'm just a tag along. I'm yeah, just he's friend. just my friend. Just a tag along. And what's your name? David. David? I'm sorry, yeah. I'm probably not doing anything. What, uh, David, what's your last name? Maycheck. How do you spell it? M-A-C-E-K. M-A-C? E-K. E-K. If anyone ever needed an example of what Nervous looks like, this is it right here. These boys are clearly rattled. Sebastian biting his nails and David trying to drink and spell his name at the same time. Sebastian knows that he is in hot water as he has full awareness of what he was there to do. His friend David on the other hand is a different story. Whether he knew what he was there for is something that is to be debated. I will clarify though that legally he was cleared. No arrest and no evidence to suggest that David had any intention to sleep with a minor. So as I construct an argument both for and against him, be aware that it is speculation on my part and nothing is being said with certainty. So what are you guys up to? Nothing. Nothing. Just came to hang out. The tone in Sebastian's voice says it all. Listen to the whimper that is laced with every sentence that he creates. It has a tremolo to it that indicates he is preparing for the worst. So what are you guys up to? Nothing. Nothing. Just came to hang out. Yeah, him out. Who are you gonna hang out with? Oh, this girl I met. Really? Yeah. And, and what are your guys' names? Sebastian Rodriguez. Sebastian Rodriguez. Yeah. It is also plausible to assume that he is playing this submissive role to look as least threatening as possible, something that would line up with his character. If he is willing to tell a 12-year-old girl that his penis is small to sleep with her, then I wouldn't put it past him to pretend to be pathetic, to give the impression of harmlessness in an attempt to evade trouble. And so you're Sebastian, uh, 
L O G C. Yeah. And who are you? Oh, I'm just the tag along. I'm yeah, just he's just my friend. Just the tag and what's your name? David. David. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm not planning on doing anything. What, uh, David? What's your last name? Maycheck. How do you spell it? M A C E K. M A C E K. E K. Mm -hmm. And Sebastian, what's your last name? Rodriguez. Rodriguez. How old are you, Sebastian? I'm 20, sir. And David, how old are you? 22. 22. Yep. And where do you guys live? I live in North Hollywood. In North Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what are you drinking there? Sebastian is about to stand up whilst Hanson talks to his friend. Pay attention to his movements as the focus is not on him right now. He is under some serious pressure in this moment. Hanson has walked out with paperwork, so he's probably not a father, and going to jail would be a worst nightmare for most people, let alone a 20 year old man who just wants to have fun and not think about consequences. No fear. Rockstar. Uh, so it's just an energy drink then? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't drink on that. So who who were you guys here to see tonight? I don't know, just a girl I met on the internet. A girl you met on the internet. Yeah. And how old uh, is that girl do you suppose? I don't know. What did she tell you? We just talked. We just said we were gonna come over. Right. We weren't gonna do anything. Yeah, but what age did she give you on the internet in the chat? I don't know. I was talking to her, so I don't know. I'm just the tag one. Or just the tag along. Yeah. Uh, but she did give you an age. I can't remember. I really didn't pay attention, sir. Twelve, she said. Yeah, that's bad. Twelve years old. And you saw her picture, right? In I her did. profile? Well... You did? Yeah, I did. You did. And how old did she look in the picture? I don't know. I'd say 16. She sounded old. That's why I talked to her. But she told you she was 12. I know, but she that's really sounded old. You started out saying that you were 16 and then you changed it to 20 when she said she wanted somebody older. Yeah. You say, I want someone who is 12 so bad, oh my god. That's right. what you said, right? Right. <clears throat> she says, what's your name? You say, Chris. Yeah. Do you also go by Chris, Sebastian? No. So you just gave it that Yeah. Chris has Sebastian against the ropes, and he's not letting up. Sebastian's body language is that of a frightened lamb. He is fidgeting, his voice quivering, cannot sit still. He seeks eye contact, but cannot maintain it, and is blinking rapidly. It is also interesting to note that he is not denying anything that Chris is confronting him with. He did have a small defense where he said that she thought she sounded 16, but he didn't die on that hill. Sebastian is a very immature young man and is getting a crash course on adulthood from Hanson right now. It doesn't matter how submissive Sebastian tries to make himself look, as this has probably worked for him in the past when he's gotten in trouble. Chris just does not stop and say, Ah, you little brat, get out of here. He continues on. And the physical signs of visible discomfort continue to grow as the interaction moves along. Who were you guys here to see tonight? I don't know, just... A girl I met on the internet. A girl you met on the internet. Yeah. And how old uh, is that girl do you suppose? I don't know. What did she tell you? We just talked. We just said we were going to come over. Right. We weren't going to do anything. Yeah, but what age did she give you on the internet in the chat? I don't know. I was talking to her, so I don't know. I'm just the tag along. So just the tag along. Yeah. Right. But she did give you an age. I can't remember. I really didn't pay attention, sir. Twelve, she said. Yeah, that's bad. Twelve years old. And you saw her picture, right? In I her did. profile? Well... You did? Yeah, I did. You did. And how old did she look in the picture? I don't know. I'd say 16. She sounded old. That's why I talked to her. But she told you she was 12. I don't know, but she really sounded old, sir. You started out saying that you were 16 and then you changed it to 20 when she said she wanted somebody older. Yeah. You say, I want someone who is 12 so bad, oh my god. Mm. That's what you said, right? Right. <clears throat> she says, what's your name? You say, Chris. Yeah. Do you also go by Chris, Sebastian? No. So I you just gave her that name? Yeah. Am I in trouble, sir? 
Sebastian asks if he is in trouble, sir, and Hansen lets both boys sweat as they anxiously stare at him for his answer. The answer never comes, and subliminally this tells them that yes, Sebastian, you are in trouble. Let me continue reading the chat so that you can get an idea of just how much trouble you're in. A lot of the power that comes from our day-to-day -day dialogue with people is in the unspoken, the things that we don't say. And for Hansen to say nothing in response to this question, it speaks more than any word could. Am I in trouble, sir? She asks about bringing Mike's Hard Lemonade. Yeah, I did what bring is Mike's Hard Lemonade. So that's okay to bring that to a 12 year old girl? No, woman? it's not okay, sir. I'm not even needs to smoke myself. I will, babe. We can eat at your house. I know where Corona is, it's only an hour away from where I live. I can Rockstar Energy got a bit of product placement there, hey? Also, I can't help to feel that David would really be sweating right now, as he's the only one who could purchase the alcohol. Neither Sebastian nor the 12-year-old girl can legally consume it, and he has stated that he's not drinking tonight. So, who is it for? Drive there. You talk about what you're gonna do, like make out and touch you and stuff. Are you a virgin? Yeah, cool. What's the farthest you have gone with a guy? Did you bring condoms with you, Sebastian? I did. You did. Do you have it in your pocket? Yes, sir. Put them on the counter. Am I going to go to jail, sir? That's not up to me, Sebastian. That's not up to me. I really want to go over. Are we really going to do it? Now, um, David, what did your buddy Sebastian here tell you about what was going to go on here tonight? Really nothing that just came along. It's just a tag along. So just a tag along. I yeah, really didn't know. I really wasn't yeah. planning on doing anything, sir. I was just going to come over here. Seriously. You but got Mike's Hard Lemonade. You got condoms. Sounds like you were planning to have sex with this girl. I'm not, sir. But why would you bring this stuff, I know, sir? How does that look? I know, sir. I'm so sorry. I don't know what to say. I don't want to go to jail. There it is. Sebastian is not sorry at all. He's not even remotely showing a slither of understanding for the reasonings of why he is in this situation. He is just cycling on thoughts about what will happen to him if he goes to jail. He doesn't want to go to jail, and he's made that clear. Watch a little earlier on, as Hansen barks orders at him in a fashion that resembles law enforcement. This then makes Sebastian believe that he is starting to understand what he's just walked into. Did you bring condoms with you, Sebastian? I did. You did. Do you have it in your pocket? Yes, sir. Put them on the counter. Am I going to go to jail, sir? That's not up to me, Sebastian. That's not up to me. Going to jail is his biggest fear right now. You can hear it in his apologies. They are very insincere in their delivery, which indicates the words are lies. Yet the emotion behind them is not a lie. The pain in his voice is real. The regret and remorse that he is expressing is real, but not for the person he could have harmed. It's aimed towards his own misfortune as he believes he is now facing jail time. Sounds like you were planning to have sex with this girl. I'm not, sir. But why would you bring this stuff, Sebastian? Know, sir. How does that look? I know, sir. I'm so sorry. I don't know what to say. I don't want to go to jail. What would have happened if I wasn't here um, and a 12-year-old girl was here? Nothing, so I wouldn't have done anything with her. How come you brought your tag along? Because I just brought him because I wasn't going to do anything, sir. I just wanted him to come with me. I really wasn't planning on doing anything, sir. I just wanted to come stay. Well, the other scared. option would have been that the two of you had some sort of plan cooked up. No, no, plan. no sir. She no said she well, so. The way Hansen says you both had some sort of plan cooked up really tickles me. Well, the other option would have been that the two of you had some sort of plan cooked up. The tone of his voice in conjunction with the way that he waves his paperwork at them, it really paints them in a light as though they're a dim-witted criminal duo cooking up a god-awful plan to rob a bank or something. And then the way that they both stumble over their own words as they try to defend themselves really adds to this picture. It's one of those unscripted moments that gives us a glimpse into how Hansen's mind works in these moments. And I really find this one to be amusing. I really wasn't planning on doing anything, sir. I just wanted to come kind of say. Well, the other scared. option would have been that the two of you had some sort of plan cooked up. No, 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 no sir. She no said plan. she's alone, so. What do you guys do? Do you go to school? Or? I go to Salt Lake Community College, sir. Right. What are you studying? I'm st I don't know yet. I'm, I'm just decided I'm going to get business, yeah. yeah. I'm just his friend from Escondido. Right. I live in Encinito. I'm just visiting him. <laughs> do you work or 
right now I just got, what is it, I got, what do you say, like, dismissed from my job. Right. So I'm laid off. Yeah, I'm just trying to find another job right now. Which job did you have before you got laid off? Medical impact. Medical impact. Yeah. Was, what does that involve? Uh, I was doing like, uh, well before that I was doing the building for the pharmacies. Right. This was kind of like it, I was answering people's questions on their benefits. Right. And like, for like the medical part D, I don't know if you heard it. Right, right. But stuff like that, you know. Right. I'm just, I just came out here to get my life on track, you know. Right. Because like, things, I was, I used to live in Utah. Right. But my mom, she kicked me out, so. And I, I have, like, kind of family down here, so. Yeah, yeah. That's just trying to... Hansen has momentarily shifted his attention towards the tag-along David and asks him a few questions to shed a little light on who he may be. David's seemingly honest answers here have painted himself as a bit of a troubled man. He's been kicked out of home by his mother, dismissed from his job, and is here to get his life on track as he kind of has family here. So the question is, did David know what his friend was here for? Just because he has a troubled background, does that make him capable of committing an act such as this? I'm not going to say that I stand on one side of the fence or the other, but seeing as David has attended this event, I will take a look at him. I would like to point out again though, he was cleared of all criminal intent and was not convicted with any charges relating to sexual acts with a minor. With that being said, I do have theories for both David's innocence and guilt, and I'd like to put them both forward. First up, let's have a look at why David may not have known how old she was. Sebastian really wanted to get the decoy the alcohol that she had asked for, especially since right at the beginning of the chat, the decoy says that one of her main reasons for being online is to find an older guy, someone who can get her beer. She also mentions Mike's lemonade twice during the chat, and it is alluded to that she mentioned it again once in their phone call. Sebastian stated during the chat that he will get her this alcohol, and so acquiring this would be a main focus for him. Sebastian has indicated signs throughout his chat that he is both desperate for this sexual encounter to occur, and in security that she may be talking to other men. It's reasonable to assume that he doesn't want to do anything that could ruin his chances at this sexual encounter taking place. Obtaining alcohol is a must for him. I speculate that he contacted his friend David, who is 22, someone who was able to purchase alcohol for him, and he asked him to buy him some mics. His friend would have questioned him who the mics is for, and I imagine Sebastian didn't want to disclose the full details of who he was going to see. David could have said, I'll buy the alcohol on the condition that I can come and party with you and this unknown girl, being unaware of her age. On a side note, I don't think it's a very good look turning up to a girl's house whom you've had sexual dialogue with, and the girl is not aware of another male that you're bringing along. That's just plain frightening. Giving David the benefit of the doubt here, if he was unaware of her age, he could have said, I'll just tag along, and when we get there, let's see if she can call up any friends to come over as well. So David has invited himself to his friend's evening, unaware of the age, and Sebastian does not want to reveal this age, but he also does not want to turn up empty-handed, so he agrees to letting his friend join, likely thinking, if her age is revealed, he can easily say he had no idea, as David has no chance of seeing his chat log. Another interesting thing here is something that I noticed earlier. When Sebastian and David enter the house, Sebastian is well ahead of his friend. He really is quite determined in his attempts to get into the house first and find the girl. He likely wants to evaluate just how young she looks and to see if he can act as an immediate buffer between his friend and the child. There are a few moments of interest throughout the interview as well that I'd like to pull up to somewhat support this theory. As Hansen confronts the boys, Sebastian is clearly more nervous than David. He is biting his nails and has a very shaky voice, whereas David seems less shaken up, more casual. He's likely assuming that Hansen is just an angry dad who wasn't meant to be home and doesn't want unknown boys coming to visit his daughter. Sebastian Rodriguez. Yeah. And so you're Sebastian uh, LAVC? Yeah. And who are you? Oh, I'm just a tag along. I'm yeah, just he's just my friend. Just a and what's your name? David. David? I'm sorry, I'm not doing anything. What, uh, David, what's your last name? Maytag. How do you spell it? M-A-C-E-K. M-A-C-E-K. E-K. Mm -hmm. And Sebastian, what's your last name? Rodriguez. Rodriguez. As Hansen mentions the girl is 12 and Sebastian says, Yeah, I know. It's bad. David is left speechless. 12, she said. Yeah, that's bad. 
12 years old. And you saw her picture, right? Some people would react differently, that's for sure. Probably hurling abuse at their idiotic friend. But we do not know who David is or what his personality is like. It is plausible that he is gobsmacked in this moment and the reality of what is going on is sinking in for him. He's beginning to go over all of the details and the lies that his friend has told him. Sebastian has proven that he is a liar, which means I doubt he would have any problem lying to his friend about the finer details of this hookup, as long as it supports his cause. Now that we've looked at the moments that work for David, there's two that work against him and really don't look good. Let's review them now. As Hansen is reading out some of the more incriminating details from the chat log, one of the things that he says is, I want someone who is 12 so bad, oh my god. Sebastian confirms that he did indeed say these words, and neither him or his buddy looked phased by the statement at all. You say, I want someone who is 12 so bad, oh my god. That's what you said, right? Right. I've read a fair few of these logs now, and this is a pretty hairy sentence. If anyone were to hear these words said out loud in public, it would cause some serious eyebrows to raise. And yet here they are, being spoken out loud, and both boys don't seem to batter an eye. You say, I want someone who is 12 so bad, oh my god. That's what you said, right? This leads me to believe that David is more aware as to what is going on than he is letting on. Whilst Hansen was making me laugh earlier with his line about them cooking up a plan, they both defend themselves. And David makes the odd defense that he knew she was alone. How come you brought your tag along? Because I just brought him because I wasn't going to do anything, sir. I just wanted him to come with me. I really wasn't planning on doing anything, sir. I just wanted him to come stay. Well, the other scared. option would have been that the two of you had some sort of plan cooked up. No, no, plan. no sir. She no said plan. She was alone, sir. I'm unsure what this is supposed to mean. If he wouldn't know that she was alone, then why bring that up as a defense? Wouldn't it make more sense for him to say, I thought this was going to be a party, that she would have friends here? And going one step further, wouldn't this give David an opportunity to say, I had no idea she was 12, I thought we were coming to meet 17 year olds. If he really thought that he was coming to meet some girls of legal age, wouldn't this be the very moment to say that? The fact that he doesn't take up this line of defense at this very moment to me is a pretty telling indicator that he knew what was up. And so that's David Mayhek, a young man caught up in the moment- Oh, hang on. That's right. We're here for Sebastian, and we're not finished yet. Let's continue on. Do you guys ever watch TV? Yeah, yeah we do. I watch TV. Do you ever watch Dateline NBC? I have it. Yeah. Well, I'm uh, Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story on people going on the internet trying to meet okay. kids. Okay. Now, if there's anything else you'd like to say about what you're doing here tonight, we'd be happy to hear it, and if not, you're obviously free to go. Great, thanks a lot, sir. Rodriguez is genuinely relieved here. His fear is not a reality, and Chris is not law enforcement. Just some journalist for a program that he's never heard of. It looks as though he feels the worst has just passed him. He's not going to go to jail, and now he just has to deal with maybe his face being on television for a program that no one watches. We'd be happy to hear it, and if not, you're obviously free to go. Great, thanks a lot, sir. From his perspective, he just got off scot-free. I'm just to tell you Alright, we'll go on. Thanks a lot, sir. Now, um, yes, sir. what about these cameras? Am I going to be on TV? Or? Well, we don't know that yet. We're doing a story and we haven't made any final decisions about who's going to be What if I don't want to be on TV? Well, I mean, we're allowed, because you made the decision to come into this house, we're allowed to videotape this. Oh, I see. Um, so, it's kind of up to us, but... Uh, I don't want this to be on TV. Well, I, I just I really wasn't planning on doing anything. No, I, I understand your point. Listen to how the tone of Sebastian's voice has now changed in comparison to when he thought he was dealing with law enforcement. Thanks a lot, sir. Now, um, yes, sir. what about these cameras? Am I going to be on TV? Or what if I don't want to be on TV? I don't want this to be on TV. Well, I, I just I really can't... wasn't planning on doing anything. No, I, I understand your point. He has become a bit more pushy with his request, stating that he does not want this to be on TV giving us a bit of a glimpse into what he is actually like in his everyday life. But uh, what I'm saying is I don't know who's going to be on and who's not. Okay. We're, just, we're not even there yet. All right, sir. So, Thanks a lot. Okay. Can I take this, sir? Yeah, you can take it and you take your comments. And so that's Sebastian Rodriguez, hey? Just because he is younger, barely an adult himself, does not warrant sympathy. It's very easy to look at these younger guys and say, 
I bet the decoy lured them in, and I bet they just weren't thinking. They're young and they're dumb. Well, that is not the case here. Sebastian went out hunting for this. He persisted and persisted and barely gave the decoy a chance to lure, as he was already biting long before the fact of the engagement was promised. It is unconfirmed, and this could be a mistake on my part, but Sebastian looks to David as they leave and he snickers. A small gesture that says more about his personality than any hour-long video ever could. We just witnessed two young delinquents who could have messed up a child's life. And because there was no legal consequence, that they're aware of anyway, they make their exodus in a jolly fashion, expecting to go home, drink their alcohol, and have a laugh about what all that was. Unfortunately for both of them, this is not the case. It's not some unknown television program that would have been lost in obscurity. Sebastian would go on to get arrested and claim his rightful spot in the To Catch a Predator Hall of Fame for the rest of our documented history. Once again, I'd like to say thank you so much for making it to the end of another video. It's been an absolute pleasure so far making these and I can't express just how it feels to have you all there supporting. And occasionally criticizing. <laughs> If anyone feels compelled, I have a Patreon where I post update videos on where I'm at with the week and just general thoughts that come up through the creation process. If you're interested in joining along, there's a link in the description, but please don't feel obliged. The main content will always be available for free here on YouTube. I hope you're all having a great one and I'll catch you next time.